In this video, I am going to show you a detailed guide to the simple two-step process that made me fluent in English and will certainly help you achieve fluency fast if you follow it. To be able to speak English fluently is hands down one of the most desired skill a known native English speaker wants. See that people always want to be fluent in English or to speak English well. No one really wants to be great at doing English exercises or to be the best English reader there is. You and I want to speak English. That's the ultimate English learner's goal. And funny enough, that's exactly where most people fail at. Most English learners are great at every other skill but speaking. They read, write, and understand English well, but for some reason they struggle to speak. Is there a conspiracy behind it all? Or might just be that most people are trying to learn to speak English by focusing on their wrong methods, like trying to improve their spoken English by doing textbook exercises, for example, or trying to improve their speaking by focusing on the study of grammar rules. Most people are repeating what everyone is doing and most people are getting nowhere. You cannot expect a different outcome if you do not change the approach. That just won't work. Well, with all that said, why should I do then to speak English fluently? I am going to tell you what I did, what worked for me. And if it worked for me, it will certainly work for you as well. Number one. Use meaningful stories with questions and answers. Stories are, first of all, a great way to memorize anything. Have you ever heard of the memory castle technique? I have a video about that and I recommend you to watch it if you're serious about learning English. Our brain works by associating new pieces of information you have just learned with old information stored in your memory. And it works a lot more effectively when you associate images, sounds, places, and feelings to this new information you want to retain. And the story provides you with all of that and also a timeline, a logical sequence of events. All of that adds up, increasing your chances of memorizing whatever you want dozens of times. There is a book written by Dominic O'Brien, eight times world memory champion, exclusive on memorization techniques. It is called, You Can Have an Amazing Memory. It is worth reading. Another benefit of a story is that stories have grammar embedded in them. You learn grammar without consciously studying grammar. You learn how phrases are put together correctly without having to know the why is behind it. Just like what a native speaker does, just like you and I did to learn our first language. Remember that you could speak your native language fluently at the age of five and had no clue about any grammar rules. Didn't even know what grammar was. How is that possible? It is not only possible, but the correct way to learn grammar. Do you think of grammar when you speak your native language? Obviously not. Because if you do, you won't be able to speak fluently. Speaking is something that we do without thinking. It comes out naturally and automatically. Speaking is like driving a car. When you start learning how to drive, you have to think to change the gear, to remember to turn your blinkers on before a turn, to press the clutch before you change the gear, and so on. But as you keep driving, at some point it all becomes second nature, and you don't think of it anymore. A car becomes an extension of your own body. 
The same principle applies to language learning. If you think of all the grammar rules behind every phrase you say, you won't be able to talk at all. It has to become second nature. That's why it's much more effective to learn grammar unconsciously through stories, especially the ones with questions and answers. Always remember that you want to be able to speak English with proper grammar. You are not studying to give English grammar lessons, at least that's not our goal here. Stories can also give you an excellent vocabulary. You learn phrasal verbs, expressions and idioms, all of that within a meaningful context, not random words without a phrase, as in a list of words from a textbook. Stories with question and answers give you immediate feedback. Let's say whoever's reading the story tells you, the girl rides her bike to school every day. And he will go on and ask you, does the girl ride her bike to school only a few days a week? Then he gives you a few seconds to answer the question by yourself and then comes back and say, no, she does not. The girl rides her bike to school every day. If you answer the question wrongly, let's say you answer no, she rides her bike to school every day. You would have had immediate feedback and noticed that you should have used rides with an S instead of ride in that case. So that's how you're supposed to learn grammar, by having constant exposure to the correct use of the language and somebody to correct your mistakes along the way. Second, practice speaking alone. I've lost track of how many times I have tried to find an online partner to practice English with. You have probably tried a few times as well, and it's not an easy task. First, there is a scheduling issue. You have to find a time where both of you are free to chat. It can prove to be really hard depending on where your partner is from. Second, you're very limited to the amount of time you can practice, usually not enough if you're serious about achieving fluency. The third issue is your partner might have poor English and that might have an effect on your English if you're not at the level where you can discern from mistakes that he or she is making. You might start copying and repeating those mistakes. It is a bit of a challenge to find a good speaking partner. Do not give up trying to find a good one, but if you find, it will prove very beneficial. Aside from using the story with questions and answers to practice on your own, I recommend using the imitation technique. The imitation technique basically is like this. You watch or listen to a piece of English conversation. It can be a YouTube video, podcast, an audiobook, etc. And then you pause after, let's say, one minute or 30 seconds. Then you try to retell what was said in your own words, trying to use the same relevant words that were used in the conversation so that you can memorize and use these relevant words. Repeat the cycle for a few minutes. It may seem easy, but I assure you it is not, especially if you've never done it before. As you get used to it, you can increase the time between pauses, trying to retell bigger chunks of the dialogue, and eventually try retelling the whole conversation or the whole story. You can also increase the complexity of the topics by selecting different materials. I highly recommend you to freely swap among podcasts, interviews, speeches, and dialogues so you can get the better of the whole spectrum. There are endless possibilities to progress using this method. You will never be bored. With all that said, I advise you to practice English speaking on your own every single day for at least a few minutes and keep a good few speaking partners to chat with a few hours a week to put your English to test and to use the words and idioms you acquired that week. Let's quickly review what we learned so far. People want to speak English fluently. They do not want to be great at doing exercise. In order to achieve fluency, you have to use meaningful stories with questions and answers. This type of stories allow you to absorb grammar 
unconsciously and acquire relevant vocabulary in context. 2. Practice speaking alone. This way you can practice speaking English every day as much as you can without having to rely on someone else. You can also expand your vocabulary and practice retelling parts of a conversation by using the imitation technique, which gives you unlimited ways to progress and infinite materials to study. Now, if you want to know the single most important piece of advice I would give my 15-year-old self if I could go back in time, check this video.